All right, good morning, Trail Me Away family. So, uh, ooh, uh, day 22 on the trail here. Hiked a little extra yesterday, so I've got a light day today. Uh, which is just fine by me. Only got about 10 miles to do today, which is nice. Beautiful weather this morning, low 70s temperature wise. And uh, I'm gonna head over and meet the family at the Hutchinson homestead here. I was gonna try to get to that yesterday, but I was just out of gas at the end of the day. Can't remember if I said or not, but I did something I've never done before, which is I hitchhiked my way uh, back up to the campground once I got into the Stone Mountain State Park area and uh, yeah <laughs> boy that was three or four miles that uh, were best ridden in the bed of a pickup truck let's just put it that way Got a ride from a Stone Mountain uh, Ranger and uh, also got part of the way there. And then I got a ride the rest of the way from a uh, kind visitor to the park. So, uh, anyways, it uh, feels like it's going to get hot today, which is going to be the new normal. Especially the more I get down off the mountain, the hotter it will be. I'm just hoping and pray that my body is able to take that. I'm going to be hiking less and, for the most part, biking more. And uh, instead of dealing with temperatures where the highs in the 70s or lower 80s, I'm going to be dealing with probably upper 80s, lower 90s for the high a lot of days uh, coming up. And uh, I don't know. I've taken plenty of sweat baths before. I've lived in North Carolina more or less my entire life. So we will see if I can take the heat or not. All right, so pretty hiking this morning, and uh, keep moving. Ah, yes, another thing that perhaps I need to comment on is uh, I may look like a different person, and that's because I got a haircut last night uh, <laughs> To commemorate the uh, completion of the mountain segment, I removed my mountain man hair and, oh, looking a little bit more like a flatlander now. Uh, so, there's that. Boy, howdy, shaving all that, uh, shaving off all that uh, beard. That was rough. Anyway. Anyhow, oh, I guess it's a good time for today because it feels, it feels as warm right now as it got at any point yesterday, so it's still the morning. Got a little bit later start this morning, probably like 9.30ish when I finally got on the trail, so running a little bit behind normal, but I again enjoyed sleeping in this morning.
I have learned a lot about shoes uh, on this trip. And uh, I think I'm to the point of being ready to try hiking with trail runners. For the longest time, I really just like the protection that you get from having full-fledged hiking shoes. But I mean, after having a day of my hiking boots being so uh, inundated with water and generally stinky that I was afraid to put my feet in them, so I hiked, you know, like 16, 15, 16 miles in Crocs. Uh, clogs, excuse me, they're not name brand. Um, so yesterday I had the experience of getting my um, breathable Merrells, these shoes. They got soaked yesterday, mainly from walking through wet grass. It rained on them a little bit, but wet grass, wet ferns. Um, put them under the fan last night, took the insoles out, they're dry this morning. That versus the waterproof uh, above the ankle, you know, mid height or whatever they call them, uh, Merrells that I've got. They uh, put them under a fan for like two days and the toes still weren't dried out when I put them on the third day or whatever. So uh, you got waterproof shoes. If they ever get wet inside, on the trail, you're basically never gonna get them dry. Maybe if you have a place, I put on bug spray earlier too, that lemon eucalyptus stuff. Um, it works a little bit. I think I'm going to get some deep the next time we're in uh, civilization. Barely even have cell signal here at uh, Stone Mountain. Every now and then we get some, and then it goes away. But uh, I don't know. There's something uh, if you're if you're going to go waterproof with your shoes. Need to have a way to keep the water out, waterproof pants, something like that. Um, and if you don't, might as well not even bother with the waterproof shoes. Uh, they're fine for doing little creek crossings on trails where there's not stuff leaning in on you. But uh, a lot of these uh, trails in the wilderness areas, less used trails, have stuff leaning over. If it rains, it's going to run down your legs, soak into your socks, go into your shoes, and uh, you're going to have wet shoes for days, and therefore wet feet. So, I get it now. Took a lot of time on the trail to figure it out, but I do get it. And uh, trail runners are basically just running shoes lighter uh, lighter weight uh, a little bit less robust composition and they probably dry out twice as fast as these breathable Merrells that I've got on so uh, a lot of through hikers will wear those they wear them out faster but uh, it's probably worth it That makes the second thing that I get. I get trail runners and I get ultralight. All makes perfect sense now. I'm starting to pick up some views of the uh, Stone Mountain rock face over there. Supposedly I'm coming up maybe another half, three quarters of a mile on the uh, Wolf Rock where I can go look out. Supposedly that's got some pretty good views, so uh, I'll check that out here in a little bit. Still trying to make it over to the family at uh, Hutchinson Homestead before they completely lost interest. We'll see. I think they were more or less going straight there, so unless they dilly-dally a lot, they'll probably be done looking by the time I get there. And this is a pretty cool area through here. Looks like there's a uh, stone wall. It's 
pretty old here, I think. Again, I'm obviously not a local historian, so don't take take this with a grain of salt, but I doubt they've built that as part of building the park. There's like a pretty flat area up here. I'm getting really close to the Wolf Rock area. And I know there's an old uh, ruin of a homestead up here somewhere not too far. So it's kind of cool to think uh, who might have lived here before. This certainly would have been a nice little area. Bear food. Lots of it too. They had the bear signage up at the campground, so I bet they're around. Alright, coming out on the Wolf Rock here. It says it has views of the Blue Ridge. I guess I was up there somewhere a few days ago. Yeah, this is cool. This thing is just massive. But Monday, I guess not a big go to the state park kind of day. I bet on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon when the weather is nice. I bet this thing is just covered up with some folks. And of course the question that I ask myself is why is it called Wolf Rock? Did wolves hang out here? Wow. Maybe this is what I was looking at. I saw a big rock outcropping when I was in the woods. I think I was I actually hiked up that ridge line over there and then kind of hooked around here. So I think this is what I was looking at. Cool. I'm sure if you go far enough that way, you get to a point where you fall off or something. So. Oh, this is neat. All right, I'm not gonna dilly dally. Still trying to get up here to the Hutchinson homestead with the old family, so I'll keep moving. By the way, the Wolf Rock is definitely the biggest lunch rock I've encountered in my travels. I think you could find a spot to sit down out there. Even though with my hair short like this, I'm going to have to stay in the shade or put a hat on one. Because the top of my scalp actually gets sunburnt when my hair is short like this. Alright, so the trail guide says this is uh, a chicken coop. And I guess I could see it. Pretty big chicken coop. I said a lot of chickens. I had other animals in there, who knows? But uh, it's on the way down, but it's hanging in there pretty good. Um, and then over here, there's the chimney, hearth, fireplace, whatever you want to call it. Still standing, standing tall. Stuff like this out in the Burkhead Wilderness too in the Uwari National Forest. So maybe a wash basin, a tractor seed or something there and uh, 
I'm going to guess that the reason why the chicken coop outlasted the house is maybe the house was uh, done with that uh, the split shingles, the wood shingles and then this was done the coop was done with a metal roof the roof is the life of your house or any structure really so I guess the water shed a little bit better from this one than from the cabin so it hung in there for a longer time that hasn't got too many years left I don't believe trail goes right across this rock face to the woods over there All right, and there it is. That's the Stone Mountain. And the campground is sort of over behind it. Very rocky trail here. So far, nothing too slippery though. Kind of scary. All right, Stone Mountain has been designated a registered natural landmark. The site possesses exceptional value as an illustration of the nation's natural heritage and contributes to a better understanding of man's environment. 1975 National Park Service, U.S. Department of the Interior. So, uh, there's the Stone Mountain. And there's the Hutchinson homestead. And quite the quite the spot for a homestead there. This is beautiful country in here. You can imagine it uh, farmed over and everything. And uh, I'm gonna get back on the MST. Oh yeah. And unfortunately, the children had explored out everything, so they were done. I guess that's a note to self there. Alright, so this is the Stone Mountain Falls. Pretty cool little waterfall. Little plunge pool there at the bottom. And lots of warnings around here to stay off the rocks because you could die. Sure, no matter what you tell people, there's still a few. Alright, I personally think that rock was like a hippo mouth or something. Open and popping up above the water to grab something. You're entitled to your opinion though. Heading toward the Middle Falls. See you in a minute. Alright, so here's the Middle Falls. Nobody here right now. I'm not sure uh, how easy it would be to get down to the plunge pool there. Or maybe getting up would be the challenge. I think you could probably do it, but I'm not going to try today. Alright, I found myself a pretty decent lunch rock down here at the Lower Falls. Lower Falls were definitely uh, the hardest to get down to. I ended up taking my shoes off to cross over the creek and uh, get over here where I could actually see the falls. It's nice down here. Um, this one maybe is the least visited. I don't know. Here it is. It looks like there's a trail kind of leading back to the other side of the creek, so there may be another crossing further down that I just didn't get to that would have been easier.
right, I've been following horse trail since the uh, last turn off there to the lower falls. And uh, I thought I had done a good bit of maintenance on this trail recently uh, based on what I saw as I was heading up and dug into the side of the mountain and leveled the trail out and everything. I don't really see much of that along here, unfortunately, to show you, but um, a little bit of a climb, getting a little warmer out here. I'd say it's probably around 80, maybe a little warmer. I finally had to give in and put on the, uh, put on the hat. I don't really like the hat, but it, uh, protects from sun and bugs, and this time it was for, from the biting flies. They were uh, fierce, and there were a lot of them. And so I put the hat on, and the biting flies have started leaving me alone for the most part. I think they like my fresh cut. Anyways, I'm cruising along here, I'm supposed to meet Jennifer and the girls at about three o'clock up here on Trap Hill Ridge Road. Hoping the trail goes well because all those detours to go see the falls. Um, I'm going to be pushing pretty tight on time to get there. Hopefully they don't have to sit and wait for me for too long. I have the sneaking suspicion that the going is going to get rougher once I get off this bridle trail. Seems to be the way of the mountains to sea trail is that the sections that are used a lot by the day hikers are usually nice and clear, easy going. And then the little connecting sections between the areas of high interest um, are just uh, just a little narrow footpath that you're uh, doing well to not be touching the green stuff around you. So we'll see. Exited Stone Mountain State Park territory, uh, and this is the little connector between the John Frank Parkway and uh, Trap Hill Ridge Road. And uh, yeah, not quite the uh, hiking super highway that uh, the state park was. So far, this looks pretty passable. Uh, definitely grown up a little bit more. So uh, I'm going with prediction confirmed.
along here and really make out the tracks well uh, over here in this deeper, muddier area. All right, getting really close to Trap Hill Ridge Road, which is my pullout spot. Oh yeah, so that uh, single track trail that I was complaining about earlier, it was pretty short-lived. What I've picked up now is this uh, dirt road. Uh, not sure what they had to do to uh, work out the agreement to let hikers come through here. This seems to mostly be on private property. <clears throat> doesn't appear to be on the map either. But uh, they've got a lot of signs up, you know, stay on the trail. And they show you different driveways and whatnot, so they're private property, so presumably stay off of those. Um, a little creek crossing here. Might be able to do this without taking a bath. We'll see. All right, friends. Well, I decided to go ahead and hike down Trap Hill Ridge Road so we don't have to come back up it again in the morning. I'm going to be biking a lot tomorrow and carrying a bike some too, so we're going to see how well all that, all that system goes. Uh, the combination of carrying the bike may be interesting. But overall, a uh, successful day today. We're going to go down to the Widow Creek Falls and uh, let the girls get a little sliding rock action there since they missed the sliding rock when we were in the mountains. So uh, that caps off day 22 and uh, I think I feel a whole lot better than I did at the end of the day yesterday. So hopefully tomorrow will be a nice day as well. And uh, so far, I think we're 9 out of 22 days we've had rain. No rain today. All right. <laughs>